is because we've heard so many horror stories about things getting edited, spliced, taken out of context, where it could be great for somebody, but yet at the same time, it, it you know, if it's not done right, it can make someone look like they're, you know, not doing a good job or, or whatever the case may be, you know? Mm. Yeah, I guess. I, I think one thing that happens is that some people get in front of TV producers and the cameras and things, and they'll try to feed you a line or get you to say something that, that if you're not comfortable with it, you just say, hey, I'm not comfortable saying that, so let's move past it. And you can do that. That's okay. Um, you are in charge of what you say. Uh, I know because I've also been on the producing end of television, and uh, when people voice concerns like you just had, if they've got a story that I think is worth sharing, I would always say, you are in charge of what you say. If someone tries to push you in a direction you're not comfortable with, just don't say it. Don't, you know, just say what, say what's, what story you have to tell. Be honest, be forthright, be open, and let the chips fall where they will. And, um, yeah, you're going to get edited because all television is edited. And um, I, I think you, at the end of the day, better to put it out there and let someone contact you. You can always say, like, you know, you only heard a tiny bit of the story. Let me tell you the rest. Um, so, so my advice is always like, no, do it. Because if you have something to say, you should say it. And um, and then you know, let it let it all work out the way it will after that. Well, I, I do think it's going to happen. Um, we got ten years of NWPS research coming out in a book in a Good. couple months here. Congratulations, you've Thank run a marathon. You. Yes, yes. Yeah, and. Uh, so, you know, I, I think once that – because you have stories in there that are organized and, and you know, along with evidence and verifiable, you know, um, the whole thing, uh, you know, of course we leave names out and, 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 and you know, certain things out for anonymity, but the, it, it's there. It's there. And I think that uh, as much – like, you know, like I said, like we've been contacted before um, – and I think that once the book comes out, it may happen even more. So there's going to be a point where we say, you know, yeah, we should do it. Just yeah. like you said, because otherwise, you know, you're, you're holding yourself back in a sense. As long as you can, uh, you know, and we're honest. You know, we don't, we're not going to say anything that we're, we're, you know, we don't make stuff up. We're not going to fabricate anything. That's, sure. That goes against our nature. So um, as long as we speak the truth, no matter how they edit it, hopefully it will be okay. I mean, yeah. I know you can, I've, I've seen stuff, people take stuff way out of contest and editing jobs before, but you know, I, at the same time, we're not political figures. I'm hoping nobody's out to get, uh, you know, but you're yeah. going to ruin your, your chances of running for office. Um, yeah, <laughs> don't worry. I've been to some of the same conferences you've been at. You have no chance of running for office, just like I don't. So right. it's all good. <laughs> we're already on the list. Yeah, we're already. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes I look and I go, you know what? I wouldn't vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I know me. Um, yeah, no, it's it's um, no, it's cool. I think, I, first of all, I love this. I love these subjects. I love it. And I love talking about it and exploring it and having conversations about it. And whatever that may be, whether it's on television or on a, a you know radio show or, or just one on one at a, at a person at a conference. I think it's it's really cool. When I first started doing this, I felt like after about a year or two, like I got this all figured out. I got it. Like I know every box to put an experience in, right? I, I figured everything out. I knew all the theories, everything. And, um, and, and now that I've been doing this over 20 years, I realize, like, oh, my God, I know nothing. <laughs> it's, uh, and it's liberating, by the way. It's really liberating to realize, like, I, I don't know. I, I know so much less now than I did then. Um, but I've learned a lot more about myself. And I've learned a lot more about the people around me and the world around me. And that's really cool. So whereas in the early days I was looking for conclusions, now I'm just looking for insight and the journey is a lot more enjoyable for me at this point. That's awesome. So we have a question for you from the chat room. Okay. What are the weirdest legends that turned out to be true? Ooh. Um, well, I think there's some truth in all of them, first of all. So, um, uh, okay. So, for example, let's – this is uh, this is weird. H how about Bloody Mary? You know that one, right? You hold yeah. it in front of the mirror and you say Bloody Mary three times. 
And uh, it's, I mean, that's been done at sleepovers for how many decades, right? Uh, five, six, seven, probably, probably closing in on a century, I would bet people have been doing this. And the story behind Bloody Mary is that there was this beautiful girl named Mary Worth who was horribly disfigured in an accident. She was a very vain girl. And her parents figured she was so disfigured now, so ugly, that she wouldn't be able to stand the sight of her own reflection, so they hide all the mirrors in the house. And one day, Mary gets curious, and she goes looking, and she finds a mirror, and she looks at her reflection for the first time since the accident, and she's so appalled, she's so disgusted with herself, that she goes into the realm of the mirror and vows to seek revenge on anyone who ever summons her. And you summon her by holding a candle and saying Bloody Mary three times or 10 times or 13 times, whatever version of the story you heard. It doesn't really matter. And while the skeptic in me says, I don't believe that there's anybody in the realm of the mirror, you know, living there waiting for us. I recognize that uh, this speaks to some really big human issues like vanity, um, like dares with uh, in, in peer groups and things like that. And once in a while, I've gotten emails from often like teenage girls who said, oh my God, we did the Bloody Mary thing at a sleepover and everyone thought it was fake, but then my friend got scratched and now we're all freaking out that we've, we've opened up something that we can't close. And that is the inherent power of the legend. While I don't believe that we can live in the realm of the mirror, I do believe that we can give something uh, a great deal of power. And so it takes one scary story like that. And suddenly, you know, here's my advice. If anyone listening, try it. If you're a skeptic, I want you to be alone, though, totally alone. Whenever, wherever you live, your house, your apartment, wherever you live, be, be home alone and get yourself a candle and go into the bathroom and make sure it's dark and light the candle and look in the mirror, look at your reflection and say, Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. And just before you say it that third time, d d just ask yourself, am I just a little bit nervous? Because <laughs> I think you are. You don't ever have to admit it to me, to anybody. Just admit it to yourself. That the reality is, as silly as you think this is, there's one little primal piece of you inside that goes, uh-oh. <laughs> what, if, what if I say it the third time and I get attacked like some horror movie and that's how powerful it is we have the ability to create reality in front of us and we do it every day uh, for example if you reach into that your, your wallet right now and maybe you've got like a one dollar bill and a twenty dollar bill if I if I if I were to hold up each one in front of you right now and say you can have either one which would you like you I'm guessing you'd pick the 20 right I mean that's logic would say that um but the $20 bill is the same size as the $1 bill. It's the same paper. The design is even pretty similar. Same ink, right? Different presidents. George Washington, who, you know, was probably the, the, the greatest president ever because he's the only one who didn't want the job. Uh, and then you've got Andrew Jackson on the 20, who was uh, censured in Congress. I mean, this guy was a, a, you know, loose cannon, to say the least. Yet he's worth a six pack and a pizza. And George Washington won't even get you a cup of coffee anymore. And the reason for that is because of belief. That's it. Faith and belief. That's the only way that our paper money works. We believe that our government is backing up these banknotes and that the 20 is worth 20 times more than the one. If that belief falters, it ceases to work. And that's happened. It's happened in human history. You know, ask the Confederates how their money's doing, right? After the Civil War, right. the, the Confederate money was useless. A loaf of bread could cost you like a thousand Confederate dollars because people lost the faith in the government that was backing up those notes. And so uh, so it happens. So this is this is a, a complete system of faith, and that faith makes those things real. If you believe there is something dangerous in the mirror— if you believe that maybe you're being vain or you're tapping into something evil, primal, demonic, whatever label you want to use, suddenly you're afraid and that fear is real. So while that is a goofy, silly legend that's been done at countless sleepovers over the decades, there's some reality to it because the story just doesn't go away. You know, and the other thing that, that strikes me uh, is just the invitation factor. 
the fact that you're you're putting something out there to the universe uh and like you said uh even even skeptical people i think uh the average person believes that they have some kind of soul or spirit not everybody does but some you know um, sure and so you have the idea also of you know, it's like it's like uh, the Slender Man. It's an urban legend. Yeah. We know where it comes from, but yet, if somebody wants to see one bad enough, who's to say that a a demon or something will come along and say, "Hey, I'll be your Slender Man." Sure. You want one that bad? I can do that for you. No, I think in that one instance of several years ago, what happened with the Slender Man incident up here in Wisconsin? That's right. They claim to have seen Slender Man. Yeah, and girls. Uh, and there are the two girls that that stabbed another girl. Stabbed another girl many almost, times. Right, almost to death, and she yeah. was able to recover Miracul- from that. Yeah, m- miraculously not to death. Um, no. Right. And and to me, that's that's such an impressive story because Slender Man was invented on the internet in a, um, a online forum. We can show you the post; it's still out there. And from there, it's turned into like a meme. It's turned into a comic book. It's turned into a movie. It's turned into a horror figure to the point where some girls at a sleepover thought if they stabbed their friend to death, they would uh, honor this this creature called Slender Man. So go ask that girl that was stabbed however many times if there's no such thing as Slender Man, right? Uh, that was very much her reality. So they... they um, whatever it was they they were manipulating by manipulated by some force that was bigger than them and they they chose to label it slender man so that's how powerful this stuff can become it's not just like a, a simple story sometimes people kill and murder over these things or take their own lives or commit suicide or um you know do really profound great things as well i mean there's there's legends and stories that move people to you know uh <laughs> do, do wonderful things so it's it's that power, that inherent power of, of this thing. Um, I, I, I don't know how else to label it other than legend, but when I say legend, I really mean a living, breathing thing, you know, a thing that can be born, that can move, can pe- get passed from one person to another, that can go dormant, it can go to sleep, it can die. A legend dies when we stop talking about it altogether. That's, that's the only way it goes away. And, uh, and it sticks around for reasons that we may not fully understand. And and one example I like to give for that is is Santa Claus. You know, I mean, if I say Santa Claus, you have a picture in your mind right now. I don't have to tell you anything else. You know what he looks like. You know where he lives. You know all kinds of things all about him. And that, if that's not real, then I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how else to define reality other than I say something and you know what I'm talking about. That's that's really um, a story that. I mean, it serves us, right? Uh, uh, his spirit possesses me every December. I freely welcome it. And, um, and then the, the, the story and legend lives on and grows and evolves and changes um, year after year. And that's, that's the legend part of the, the phenomena. And Santa Claus, of course, is based on a real, go- a real guy, a guy that lived in Myra, Turkey, uh, St. Nicholas, who, who was born wealthy. He was an orphan, and he gave all his money away. Um, you know, just to help others. It's all he wanted to do. And we still celebrate and venerate that all these centuries later. And that's pretty damn cool. You know, I always say uh, the the two most important words in paranormal are intent uh, and belief. Or oh, sure, yeah. What you perceive and what you put out there. Because even if something isn't paranormal... First, let's say an experience that someone thought was paranormal really wasn't. In one sense, it might as well be because they lived that and they experienced that and they believe it to be true. You know what I'm saying? So um, you can even have something that, you know, again. Uh, well, I think it's I think it, it's reminiscent of a chopa or a thought form. You know, when you have something that you give it so much energy. Yeah. And then girls, by the way, they thought that if they killed the, their friend that they would uh, go live like that would if, if, yeah if they killed somebody sacrifice someone to slender man then they can go live in his mansion in mansion the in the woods right yeah just you know yeah it's crazy yep all right it's time for our next commercial break everybody 
You are listening to Paraversal Universe Radio. We will be right back with our guest. <laughs> 